ask you about how did you get involved with that particular project and those filmmakers? I guess if I if I really think about it, I think my, my good friend here, my brother, Ben Greeno, um, kind of served as the, the bridge to that because I, I'm not really extended out beyond the reservation too much. So he, had, he was a friend of a friend or something. They heard about this project and he mentioned what was going on at my place and he got in contact with us. So that's how it came about. How long did it take to film the project? I, I think they came up for two days and um, just so happened to be like the only big snowstorm of that year. <laughs> <laughs> So what are the challenges of, of, uh, of trying to maintain the language? Well, I think our, our native languages in particular, because of the, the way that they're, they're leaving our nations, um, even though I, I can be home and, and speaking to her all the time, and um, she just doesn't hear it from anywhere else. And, and our grammar concepts and our languages are a, a little different than English, and so I think they have a hard time transitioning from understanding to speaking, and, and that's kind of what I'm seeing in her now, but um, she's, a, she's a very good understander of Menominee, and, and she speaks, although she makes some mistakes, you know, I'm, I'm still pretty proud of when she, when she does use her language. Any other questions? How's, uh, the language that you stone up on 47 about that? Uh, the Spirit Rock you're talking about. Yeah, so so that's actually um, that's actually part of one of our legends, and and, uh, and that rock is is said to um, represent the the life the lifeline of, of our tribe, you know. And so the Moloans they always told us that when it got small, that meant that the Menominees were leaving here. It used to, you see pictures from the 60s when this thing was this big and today it's some below it's the barrier that's there to protect it so any other questions oh, what? are you translating to your daughter as a teacher or are you just doing it just, just in Menominee yep yeah. and uh, I think what what helps is that that I've had some teaching experience and I I really like to use a method called TPR, Total Physical Response. So I, I had some hands-on training and, and being able to display to her what I'm doing as opposed to just um, telling her some kind of word, you know, I actually go through the motion of whatever I'm trying to tell her. So. Any other questions? Yeah, Jeff. Um, I'm wondering if there, I mean, I mean, there's people that that would like to, you know, but uh, the opportunities are pretty <coughs> limited now. I, like I said, we're down to about. We just had a speaker die, pass away two two weeks ago, and um, as far as I'm concerned, that puts us at about seven speakers, and he was one of the youngest at 78. So. We're, we're in a hard place right now. But yeah. yeah we, I got five kids though, and, and my plan going forward is to start taking them out to homeschool them one year at a time and, and try to mimic what we've done. And hopefully, uh, my family unit will be speaking in five years or so. Thank you. So to get this discussion going, um, I guess uh, um, I was pretty fortunate to know Patty um, from uh, Madison. Her and my father go back many, many years. And um, I was fortunate that she said yes. First she told me no, and then I called her with a different offer. <laughs> she said yes to help me because she was just phenomenal in history. She just knows so much and she's so talented. So um, I was very fortunate, but I guess um, I would like to ask Lisa, because I didn't know um, uh, other histories and stuff when I first started the project. 
I was, I didn't know anything. So um, as far as like uh, different uh, ball games and stuff, I mean, how do you guys know um, like different types of ball games and how do they relate to um, creation stories or other types of things? Because, you know, we did lacrosse, but I, I didn't go really beyond the lacrosse. So I'm going to ask that to her. Yeah. One of, during um, the lacrosse film, I leaned over and asked Dr. Carroll if um, women played a game among the Haudenosaunee similar to lacrosse. And she nodded her head, but the film was going, so I didn't get any more of an answer. Um, for, I think, a couple of semesters, when I first started teaching at UW-Green Bay, um, Misty Davids, who's a member of the Mohican Nation, was working on our campus at the time, and she had learned a women's version of lacrosse called Chaha from her father. And um, we made Chaha sticks on campus and got a bunch of folks together and eventually, for a couple of semesters, played for credit. Um, <clears throat> but what, what was missing, I think, was the, the knowledge about the tradition of women's games and women playing. And although we played, we didn't really have that historical knowledge. It's a man's game, and women, we, we don't touch their sticks, we don't do any of those different types of things. So it was kind of funny, <laughs> I came along and was like, hello. And um, we were making this film, and I, um, one of the gentlemen in the film, it was really funny, which is kind of pretty similar to a lot of communities, is I went there to meet them, and, um, and so I had to go there three different times before he let me interview him. And the third time was really funny because when I got there, he was like, well, let's go drive around. I was up in Six Nations. He's like, let's go drive around. I said, okay. So he drove me all over and showed me all the lawn houses and then all the controversial things where they would um, do all of these. Uh, they had a lot of uh, activism. It was over a parcel of land that they started developing and they ended up stopping it. And, it was, and then he was like, well, let's go to lunch. You're buying me lunch. And then we were eating lunch, and he goes, I'll give you the interview now. So it was kind of interesting. I don't know if Patty's ever had any of those experiences where she's, because she's done other films too, where elders have, you know, they don't, they don't give it to you the first time. You've got to keep coming around so they know you're serious. Yeah, you have to prove yourself. I just, you know, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is, um, you know, the Haudenosaunee are, you guys are matrilineal, matriarchal. The Ojibwe and Sioux, who are patrilineal and patriarchal, uh, women played uh, Bogotawe in Ojibwe cultures and in Siouan cultures. Um, and I always thought that was really interesting. I would have thought of any native community, the Haudenosaunee would have had women play. But I have to, I just wanted to add to something that Michelle mentioned about um, how we got together to do this. To, you didn't tell them about our little um, arm wrestling over this, the origins of who actually <laughs> invented lacrosse. <laughs> of course, I maintain the Ojibwe did, and she maintains the Haudenosaunee did. Um, I did more editing. <laughs> but um, we we had we'd been teasing each other. You know, she's talking about well, look at you know, look look at uh, who's playing lacrosse now with our style sticks. And I pointed out, yeah, those, those Haudenosaunee sticks are big wussy sticks. Anybody can catch them. I mean, the Ojibwe lacrosse sticks are like a third the size of, of the Haudenosaunee sticks. So we had a lot of fun going back and forth. But I think it's important to point out that while, uh, you know, uh, Michelle was very gracious with, with the film credits. I, I wrote some grants, I was able to help with some money, I composed some music, I helped with the script, but this vision, this film, is this woman's, I mean, the, the, she's responsible for this film. This is her vision, and I think she did a really, really great job. I, I did write a few notes, and I want to comment. Uh, Again, my, my name is J.P. Leary, I'm Cherokee of Delaware, and I teach at uh, UW Green Bay in First Nation Studies. My background academically is in, is in history and in education, and so kind of that, that's where I'm coming from with these comments. And, and I, was, I was really struck by uh, 
Greg Cahete's comments about the deeper meaning of the game is that as you look at the way that it's played with the, with the plastic sticks and a lot of this, it, there are no deeper teachings around it. But it's not that teaching of as above as down below, it's that it's about teamwork and sportsmanship and it might as well be any other game and that context, right? And we see that kind of come to fruition with that decontextualization a little bit when they're talking about the boarding schools and in that discussion of, of trying to suppress that, that savage game of lacrosse with gentler games like football. <laughs> right? And, and, and now if you think about that historically, about football, in the 1890s there was a ban to, uh, the move to ban football because of deaths on the field, right? And that's being said as a gentler game than lacrosse. Now I guess we settle disputes with that for a reason, right? But at the same time, what it really speaks to is it's not what the game is, but whose game it is, right? And so I think we can look at the, the move to ban lacrosse as another recognition of its indigenous origins, right? It's saying that's yours. And because it's yours, you can't play that anymore. I, I want to raise one more issue, I, I think. Um, and, and I was really struck by the, by the, um, the way it was edited. Just the storytelling structure of the film. And, and thinking about instructional design as a, as a teacher. Thinking about the way you kind of got it. You got to establish need to know. And I thought the way that they used that, that 2007 finals was, here's the game, and you get interested. And they go back and they share some of the cultural origins, they share some of the backstory, they share some of the history. And it's in bite-sized chunks as you're getting more and more and more. And I was looking around and walking up. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> sudden death, I was on the edge of their seat. And it was really cool to see, and I think that really speaks to the effective structure and the editing of the film, again, that establish that need to know, give a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And so while we're watching a very exciting contemporary sporting event, we're also learning about the deeper origins of the game. So I have more of it. That's it for now. <laughs> Actually, when I first started the, um, the film, it was really so for my son, who's now 13. <laughs> Because I was thinking, oh, well, what would you want to watch? And so that's where the um, the sports footage came in. Because they'll only watch a little tiny bit, and then they're just like looking at their phones, or they want to go in the other room, or they want to turn the channel. So that's kind of where the editing style came in, was to try to trick them into learning um, more of the history and, and want to see the end of it. Because you know, they might start it. And then, or they'd fast forward to all the game footage. So it, that was kind of uh, one of the, the things was uh, my son. And so his buddies would watch it and watch the whole thing. So I just wanted to mention, I, I, I wanted to share a story. Uh, my interest in lacrosse <coughs> uh, began, I, I'd always been interested in the game, but uh, I was working for Wisconsin Public Television and they sent me up to cover a story on the Red Cliff Reservation where um, Tom um, Venom, who had written the book, uh, Lacrosse, Little Brother of War, um, had gotten the grant to reintroduce the game of Bogataway on the Red Cliff Reservation. And he had gotten a sports company to donate some equipment. And so the kids, there were, I don't know, maybe 25 kids in the summer that were relearning re their game from a and Tom Venom is a non-native non um, Smithsonian anthropologist, right? So um, Denise Sweet's son, uh, uh, Damon Ponick, uh, was one of the people that, that uh, was helping out with this. But uh, Tom Venom had also tapped one of his graduate students who, uh, for, and now uh, Tom was at Harvard, and this was a graduate student, a Harvard grad, who had agreed to come to the Red Cliff Reservation to teach Native kids their game, right? And your mental, my mental image, and perhaps your stereotypical image of what a Harvard graduate student would look like, dead on. Eyes on, you know, polo shirt, khaki pants, nice and crisp, you know, nice 
pretty high-end tennis shoes. Well, Redcliffe didn't have any housing for him. And so um, they put him in, a, in just a, a lodge, I think an old sweat lodge. So he was <laughs> camping out in there. And then they found this double-wide trailer that had been in a fire, but they had reconditioned it. So um, I had been there in the beginning of the, of the summer when he's, you know, Mr. Polo shirt, Izod, you know. Um, so <laughs> I get back there at the end of the summer and Mr. Harvard grad had gone native. <laughs> he, was, he was wearing an old ripped Bob Marley t-shirt and um, ripped blue jeans, no shoes. I don't know what happened to his shoes. He had a beard that was, you know, he looked very ZZ top. <laughs> Hadn't had a haircut. And, um, you know, it, I thought about acculturation and assimilation. <laughs> which normally is framed as Native people being assimilated into white culture. In this case, this, this guy who had been, this, this you know, white man who had been brought to teach Native kids a Native game had been completely assimilated into Native culture by the, by the end of the summer. I just wanted to share that with you. I just wanted to, I was thinking about all three of the films, and uh, I'm not much of a movie goer. I don't spend a lot of time at the movies or renting movies or any of those. I don't watch a lot of movies even on television. And what I really appreciated about um, the Native films that we saw this afternoon, um, if those kinds of values and those stories were told more broadly, I think in cinema, I would be a movie goer. I would be a consumer of videos and Redbox and Netflix and all those things. Um, I identified with the with the um, ex-con, right? When he got out, the first thing he wanted to do was liberate that lizard. And <clears throat> while that's a universal value, it's also a, a distinctly tribal world value, right? The notion of caring for others and caring for the other beings. And um, Bronco's, Mr. Korn's film, just, it, it's so brief, but it speaks so powerfully to so many issues facing us across Turtle Island in tribal communities. Um, and to see him with his daughter interacting, I also appreci appreciated that film. I think so often, even in native cinema, um, our emphasis is so often on male characters and male stories. and. Ron's dedicated to teaching his language to his little daughter, and so they're the focus of that film, the two of them. And so I appreciate it that it's also a young girl's story. Um, and those are values that I embrace as well, so I love that short film. Um, anyway, uh, those are just some personal thoughts and personal comments that I had. Does anyone have any other questions about the film in general? For sure, uh, Menominee should be in the war for who originated the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we play back home and, and um, the, the right for uh, someone who carries the bundle for lacrosse is passed through name and, and you have to have a certain type of name to carry that bundle to carry on those games. And, and that's still done up there. And uh, you talked about the women's game and, and that was, alive and thriving and one generation back a lot of the older ladies back home have played in those games and it's a very uh gender orientated game that one also and and so much so that i don't know any of the mythology behind it or or the legend behind it but there is and and they know it and uh so those things are there back home and um yeah so and put that stamp on the hot door to show you know. <laughs> you know, when I was in New York, it, you know, some of it's just because the population is so big there, and in Canada, it's so big. There's so many people playing, and um, I guess my surprising comment is that we aren't closer with Menominee that we would have teams playing each other or or, or something like that. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's great. We have, I mean, it's like we have little pockets, and they're we could just get them all together, and and um, I, I think it would it would really grow. But I mean, I'm, I'm excited because of so many high school or high school players that are playing, 
So it's, it's um, I think it's, you know, I think it's coming. I think in like two, three years, you'll have like the middle school group and then, you know, all the little kids are starting to play too. So I think it's just um, for me, because my son's 13, but ever since he was little, tiny, he's been walking around with either his hockey stick or his lacrosse stick. And so he, for his whole life, has just been dying to be on a team. And, and we did take one little, we, we went to one tournament last year with a, when I had a little when I had a group who was a little, thing in uh, Kenosha, but ever since he was little, he's just been like dying to be on a team. And I, I hope I hope it happens, and I mean, I really do. I hope that in a couple years that it's it comes full circle, and and so we, we just have to keep trying to support and figure out how to keep, you know, putting sticks in kids' hands. All right, well, thank you guys so much for coming and seeing all the films, and I'm glad to show you guys everything we have. And,